this is uh, the final chapter uh, for, for our book club. And it's about uh, rewriting our code in C++. So our learning objectives are how to improve the performance of our code by rewriting in C++. And this is would be for some specific key functions, which we rewrite in uh, uh, this language. It makes an improvement. Make an improvement. Then we will see how to use uh, this package, RCPP. So the RCPP package is the package that allows you to use uh, C++ within the R environment. And it provides some functions for you to convert the code and everything, source the code and everything. So this package is provided with K contributions by Doug uh, B and John Chambers and JJ Edler. Then finally, uh, obviously we we like to improve the code, we translate the code, and then we evaluate the two codes. So the one made in R and the one made in C++ to see uh, which one is faster. Okay. Uh, as, I, uh, as I said, um, we, we write this R code in C++ for making faster. We use this RCPP package, which it's a package that uh, it's interesting and especially because it provides a, the API for comparison. And then we have a closer look at C++ and how it um, um, so provide we will provide an overview of the language, its key conventions, uh, to focus on the differences between R. Uh, then we will also have a look at the standard template library, the SPL, which is is the C++ library, uh, the standard library in C++ to use, which provides a set of extremely useful data structures and algorithms. And then finally, a very interesting part we involve comparing the two code benchmarking, the two implementations, yes, with this function from bench uh, package, the mark function. We have seen the use of this function in previous chapters. Okay, what C can handle? So just very briefly, the C language is its is foundation for for the developers and it's, so it's a very very important language uh, and it's a language that was originally implemented by Dennis Ritchie for Linux uh, at the end of the 70s and then C++ was implemented as the objective or oriented version of C. So we can uh, safely say that we in R we use C++ um, as a foundation as well, okay? There's many of the um, part of the synthesis that we are commonly used. Now, now R is better implemented and it's from the S language, but as well uh, contains some um, K synthesis um, that are common within this language. So what C++ can handle? Actually, C++ handles, handles better loops, so they can be easily vectorized. Uh, so you visually uh, understand what's happened when you looping um, some uh, iterations, and um, uh, you can uh, actually um, visualize you know, the subsequent iterations and that they depend on the previous one. Then it handles very well recursive functions as well as loops and recursive functions or problems which involve calling function millions of times. And the overhead of calling a function in C++ is much lower than in R. 
Then finally, uh, problems that require advanced data structures and algorithms in that in a, it, that R doesn't provide uh, are better implemented uh, within C++. And through this, um, the standard library, the standard template library, C++ provides an efficient implementation of many important data structures from ordered maps to double-ended trees. So I've just uh, taken this bit from the, from the, uh, from the chapter because uh, I think it's uh, very clear very well. Okay, so getting started with C++. So we are in R, our R environment. We install the package RCCP and we call the, the, the package. Then, you know, the, the purpose is to make our code, improve our code in terms of uh, performance uh, and um, to make it faster. So what is supposed to do that you can compile within C++, you do, you know how to use C++ and so you need, if you are on Mac, like the C code environment, so then you can use C++, you build up your code and then you stick into R, uh, you, know, you use the function to make the translation and then you can use it within the R environment. So if you have Windows, you might need to uh, you might need our tools or sudo um, on the Windows. Then. But let's say that we do, we don't we don't do this now, okay? So we just uh, um, use some some simple functions uh, for as an introduction to C plus plus, and those are the functions that are more frequent to use for because are those ones that are running faster uh, than, than if you use just a classic R code. Okay, so how, some of the C++ conventions, okay, how, how C++ is different from, different from R. So you use the equal sign, you must use the equal sign for assignment and never, the uh, the one that we use, so we can use either either of the two. So you must use the equal sign. Then um, C plus plus does uh, some some uh, more differentiations uh, within scalars and vectors. Uh, um, so scalars equivalent to of, of numeric integers and characters. So those are scalars. Then you have logical vectors. They, they can be double in, in integers, strings, and boolean, bool. So uh, you need to explicitly, explicitly sorry, use return, the return statement at the end of anything you, you that function. So at the end, it requires the return statement. Then mind that you need to use the semicolon because if you forget the semicolon, it doesn't work, and if you don't, you might get lost. Uh, so mind that you, at the end of each line, so in our basically in our, we can have a look at each line, try it and see if it works and everything. In C plus, you have a, a bunch of lines inside a statement. So you cannot check run one line. You need to run the 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 the, the, um, the group of lines, and mind that at the end of each line you have the semicolon. Okay. Then uh, uh, for the statement uh, uh, as a different syntax, like you you have for and then init as initiation then a check and then an increment so uh, anytime you want to like assign a value you, you need to initiate the value initiate the function then check the function if you want to check and then do some increment and specify that you are using this verb 
when you want to do this this action. Okay. Then you have the uh, vector indices starting at zero, and it starts at zero. So if you don't start from from um, so basically, if you have a four that goes uh, for e that goes from uh, you know some number to n, this number starts from zero. So any time it it goes back to the begin and then turns around. Basically, it's a obviously as it is a foundation. It's made of bytes, bits. So it, the zero is the fundamental part of the language. So then we have methods as well. So we we know what what methods are now because uh, you know we talk about functions and everything. So a method explains what a function can do. Um, a function can have different methods. Uh, now a method is called with a dot. Okay. Then uh, if you do like total, you use this plus equal, which is equal to the, um, so you use this plus uh, before the equal. Uh, and you basically are performing this this uh, um, this summation, okay? And then in place operator are uh, minus equal uh, start or times equal, and then this slash equal, okay? This is done because anytime you want to uh, maybe some somehow to compact. To, to make the code like a, a little bit more compact, somehow to uh, uh, address all the operation signs uh, on, on one place within your line of code. Okay, then you have this for, okay, you use for and not the power sign, okay. For its pronunciation, and then you have this comment block. So, to, if you want to make a comment, we 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 do with a, a um, hash sign. Uh, and now you need to do this. Uh, so, in C plus plus, it's done with this uh, uh, slash uh, uh, triple uh, star, and then again star and slash. So, inside you can write whatever you like. And we will use this uh, this comment block. Uh, we will see. So this is like a, a very little introduction of the differences in convention in in sign convention is this that you need to mind when you using R and you want to implement some C plus plus code within your uh, R environment. Okay, uh, the first function that we use is this uh, C uh, PP function. Okay, in in C plus plus, so in R we have script, and when we save the script, the script is dot R. Okay, in C plus plus is dot CPP. Okay, so now we use this. In, in fact. The, uh, just to, to, to be coherent, uh, the, the, the package that we use for uh, interacting with C++ in R is named RPPP, okay? And it contains this function, CP, CPP function. This function is the function that allows you to translate the code, but not for you, but for R. So within the R environment, because what happened is this. So um, this is the function, okay, that we use. But what is inside this bit here is C++ language. So 
what we are doing here is a making a sum function. So this add, which is the result of this the um, or this bit of code, is the sum function that we use in R. Okay. There are different ways, deep many, not not many, but two, so more than one way to make a sum function in C++. Okay, this is one. Um, so how do we do a very simple function as a sum in C++? So we do init. So we do, we do initiate the function. How do we want to call it? We call it add. Okay, this is my, I can call it whatever I want. I can call it sum, I can call it whatever. Okay, this is my function. But I need to initiate and add uh, a function. And then uh, inside, I need to specify the argument. Now, a difference in R, I just need to put the, the element. So X, Y, and Z. In C++, I need to do initiate, x initiate y initiate z okay so this is my first bit of the function what what's happening inside the function is quite similar okay except that you need to add the return statement and the semicolon so you have initiation of you call it sum and then you do the sum mention of the three elements, and then you return the result of the sum. Okay, so I, I did, so the, in the chapter, that was this function, very simple. You stick this bit of code inside the CPP function. So what do you obtain is, is the add function written in, uh, C++ that can be read, can be re read in uh, R. Okay, so if I run this um, add, the result is this. So it's a function with these three elements and call a pointer uh, with this, in this location with some, uh, you know, bits and everything. Then I do some operation assigning values to x, y, and z. So I add these three values, one, two, three, and so the result is this. Okay, so now this is all. This is everything. So we're done. Now we need, the, the, we have two examples that we can, they are slightly different that we use. But then what we do, is using this C++ function, putting inside our C, uh, this translation function, putting inside our C++ code, and then if we would like, we compare the fastness of these two ways to make our function. Okay, so a second example is for example, how to build a numerical function without argument. So this is another function in R. Okay, you this is R. You do one and you do a function which uh, release the number one. Okay, in fact, then I add 100 and the result is 101. If I would like to do the same in C++, this will be the code. So I do initiate one, I don't put any argument inside as I did here, no argument. And then what I like that this function does is return one. So this is my C++. I do the translation. I put this bit inside the CPP function and I translate it. So I'm, um, so we can we can go forward with other examples here. But I like to show you, for example, this this one here. This is a sum of a sequence. And 
there is a comparison between the sum function made, made in R and the sum function made in C++. And then we see, so with the use of the benchmark uh, syntax, which one of the two is faster? So we can see, like, this is the, this is the expression, the minimum, the median, and the iteration in seconds, the memory allocation, and, um, and the, uh, <clears throat> so the, um, the things that we don't need it, basically, the, the bits that we don't need. Okay, so what's happening, for example, in this function is that uh, uh, if I do a sum, um, I like to sum a sequence of numbers, okay? So I, I make a core um, from E, uh, that goes from T uh, to a sequence X of numbers. And then I like this uh, to be, um, to obtain the sum of this one, uh, one at the time. So if, for example, this is a, a simple function made in R, so function total starts from zero, so set uh, the variable total, and uh, it's starting from zero, and then uh, I run a for, which at um, each value, add the value of a sequence x. Now, if I um, assign uh, a random uniform of 100 uh, values to x and then run this function sum of x, I obtain the, the, the final value, which is the sum of all this, um, the, the value of this, uh, of my x. Okay, so this is a simple function. What's happened within C++? Okay, this is the code in C++. Okay, now, because um, that, uh, the bit before, so it's very important to uh, distinguish the, the type of uh, uh, elements that you are used inside uh, a function. So now we are using a double, and uh, uh, this is our um, function. We call it whatever we want. We now call it sum of c. Inside there is a numeric vector. So the one before uh, I call it initiate. So this is a um an integer which is uh so i need to use it most of the times and uh, now i again uh use this value uh, and assign it to uh, um x size so this is a convention that you use it in C++. Uh, you can use its size or other uh, of, of the same kind. So basically, you, um, your result would be a double. Uh, this would be a numeric vector. And then inside, you have uh, um, a certain number of integers or values. Uh, then you specify what the total would be. And then you run the same way the four. But this time, E needs to start from zero. The I, sorry about that, needs to start from zero. And then, it will be less than n, which is the maximum size that you have established, and then increments one by one. Okay, so this is the four, and this is what's happened. 
because the total gets incremented. This would this would be total equals to total plus x i. Okay. Instead, you do this all on a side on a side, and then you finally return return the total. So. Um, it's a slightly different language. Uh, it is um, a little bit more articulated and uh, it requires specification of the variables of the different kinds of variables very precisely, but then you get used to. Okay, so now that we have used C++, we have our function r, we like to compare them. So this is the graphic sum of x in r. This is our function in r, the new function that we made with a for loop. Uh, and then this is the sum of t. So we see that the sum of t uh, as a certain memory allocation, which is quite different from the other two functions. And, but uh, it's faster of the, the, the four um, sequence, for loop sequence that we use for summing up all the values. So our build it up sum of r. Uh, so in this case, you, you do faster, but you basically have some memory allocation. Okay. Here is another example. Um, I think we, uh, it, this is a, an Euclidean distance. Right? And uh, in R, you can do it like square x minus y s and power two. In C plus plus, you have to do some um, steps. Okay, you have an image vector. You have a distance. So this is the name of the function. What you use inside is a double and a numeric vector. Then you initiate the n with this thing, and then you have a numeric vector and the for loop. So you check the result of the two uh, functions, and you see that the memory allocation is exactly the same, but the C function is faster. So, we can um, actually uh, provide some, um, it's, it's beneficial somehow to use it. And you can even source your C++ code uh, with this uh, other function from the same package. Uh, this function is source C++ uh, P -P. and how you do it is, um, because in, for example, in our markdown, if you go, uh, should you, if I do another share, in our markdown, if you go here on this, uh, the uh, language box, in different language box. You have RCPP uh, option within the list. So basically, what's happened is that uh, you can uh, open up a chunk. Let's go in the source. Okay. You can uh, open up a chunk RCPP, and it you just go here and click on the RCP. And it, uh, inside here, 
you can include, you need to write. So basically you are writing C code, C++ plus code inside this chunk. And uh, you need to use this uh, hash include and using namespace. This is very important. And then you specify what. So this chunk and this package. And then you like to export this bit later. So basically you can run uh, C++ code inside your Armas down. Then you can even comment things and you can add our code inside. And then you can post it, basically. Okay. So obviously this is just an introduction. I'm not. Uh, I, I, I'm not. Um, I can't uh, uh, do much in less than an hour. Can you see my notes? Back to my. Okay. So. Uh, basically, in R, when you want, you like to sort some code, you use the sort function. In C++, you use the sort CPP. So you can use it inside your R markdown uh, file. Let's see uh, a quick example. So um, this is the one that we've just seen. I can uh, like set a double. This is a function mean and uh, means like a uh, um, function called mean c. Uh, this function is made of a numeric vector x. It's initiated with uh, or in the this integer of uh, which is different, but. But, uh, you know, it's requiring initiation and um, um, for, um, that, that would definitely mm, to be, need to be um, specified, uh, the type of variable. So, and then the result that you obtain, it's a double, okay? So this is actually the same as before. And then this is what happened uh, in R if you compare the result. If we have a look at the book, which is not here. I think I need to, okay. So, um, uh, okay, so, um, your uh, file need to uh, should have this extension, and then needs to start with this uh, bit here. And then for each function that you want available within R, you need to prefix it with this um, syntax. For example, it mentioned the the chapter mentioned. Uh, Roxygen two, the use of Roxygen two, and how this relates to app export. Okay, as you can see, he uses um, the R CPT package to export some code from C plus plus. Okay, and. Uh, it controls whether a function is exported from a package and made available to the user. Uh, so this is the, the, the thing. 
there are some interesting exercises, but we do not have time for doing this. Uh, we go a, a little bit forward. You can say, oh, there's more to see. Okay. In uh, C++, you have uh, a different, uh, um, you know, way to do the things. So whether you are doing data frames, you are dealing with data frames, function, or attributes. One example of using data frames is this. So open up your RCPP chunk within your um, I must down, and then uh, if you use this um, uh, yeah. this bit here, uh, it's uh, basically the same as this the lm function. So uh, and it, it is interesting because you you can see that how uh, the lm function works in R. And uh, obviously, it is a double. We call it MP. And uh, uh, the result of uh, so what our function accept is a list. Um, and uh, so we specify mood mod, and this will be uh, conditional to the fact that if. Um, mod inherits lm uh, then the stop because uh, uh, the input must be uh, is not so it's not uh, a linear model so it stops otherwise uh, calculate the residuals basically okay and you set the residuals as a numeric vector and um, uh, as a fitted values uh, at residuals and at fitted values. So they can be residuals and fitted values. Then you, um, you know, initiate uh, an integer and uh, with uh, this reciting size, and then uh, uh, the double would be R equal to zero, and then you do the four. So, which goes from zero to n, incrementing by one by one, and calculate the residuals. So, the residuals will be uh, calculated on proportion of the fitted values, and then return the proportion of the L divided by n. I, I'm not, so, uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, this is can be interesting for someone, not interesting for, uh, for another if you don't uh, do these things. But then uh, if you do the same thing, um, you set the mod in R and use the, the function made in C++ with mod, which is your uh, model. You see that it releases the, the median of the, the, the error level. Uh, and this is an example of values uh, named data frames. Um, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there are other classes which has, uh, um, they, they can be, uh, we have seen integers, numeric, and so, you know, you can have a logical characters and everything. Uh, but then you can use lists, data frames, functions, and if you have functions, you know, um, you can do other things. And then you have attributes, um, and you specify uh, particular attributes. And then, so this is what uh, uh, you can do with C++. 
okay, it takes maybe a, a little bit of time to if, if you are new to it to get used to, but uh, then then it turns out to be useful. Okay, as well as our uh, missing values are an interesting part uh, to deal with. And uh, C++ deals with missing values slightly different from R. So basically, you need to specify, as, as it starts with zero, you need to specify uh, uh, which type of missing value you are dealing with, because otherwise it doesn't count. Some somehow uh, all the missing values or add missing values where they are not, okay? So important to, to specify if you, when you are talking about scalars, if they are integers or doubles, if you are dealing with strings, booleans, or vectors, okay? Okay, this is the standard template library and it's the library. Uh, of C++, and this is the fundamental library, and provide a set of useful data structures, okay, and algorithm. So you can use iterators such as um, specifying this way. Uh, um, if it's a numeric, logical, or character, uh, you specify the iterators. Basically, the, the, it, it provides uh, some uh, structures that uh, they can be used. And um, uh, there are some interesting resources. One is this uh, uh, book, Effective as, as, as PL by Scott Mayer. And another one is the container. So this one here, which I have already covered, it's interesting. So this is the containers library. You have some, um, I put this in the chat. You, you can use this uh, um, for um, oops, uh, Check it many times. So you find all the things that you needed uh, um, when you are starting understanding a bit more about C++. Okay, so it's, uh, it's the container. That's everything you need uh, for, um, for starting up with, with C++, but even to implementing code. Okay. Finally, to conclude, there are a couple of case studies. One is, the, the first one is very interesting. It's named the Gibbs sampler. And the, it, the Gibbs sampler is basically uh, a method for estimating parameters, expectations. It can be used for, for several purposes, but in particular, if we are talking, for example, for inference of statistics, it, it's important for estimating parameters. And it is a Monte Carlo um, simulation uh, algorithm that has been adapted to sample for multi-dimensional uh, target distributions. And Gibbs sampling generates a Markov chain of samples, each of which is correlated with nearby samples. So basically, you um, are dealing with this with probabilities, uh, priors, uh, posteriors, and then you are sampling, um, doing a certain number of samplings of your data uh, to see which one is, it, it will fit better uh, for different level of, of the parameters, okay? This is uh, here that's the mention of a couple of blocks which are uh, very interesting. One is this one here. And uh, it talks about the R and C++ code, which are very similar, but they, when they are compared, 
to the flood, sometimes can run to about 20 times faster than us. And um, so this is the, the, the blog. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's taken from another blog by Darren Wilkinson, where basically Darren Wilkinson introduced uh, this bit of function, this argit function, okay? And the way it's done in uh, C++. And this is a double for, okay? Which, so the, the, it's a double index, so you do for E, in one to n and for j in one to ten, so another value uh, of two values: the 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 gamma function, the gamma distribution, and the normal distribution. And then you make these two distribution running at uh, uh, the two indexes. And uh, here. Uh, the, the the blog uh, so basically uh, takes this example this Gibbs sampling for, for the Marco uh, um, Monte Carlo Marco chain to show how the, the massive dif uh, difference within uh, uh, <coughs> using R. Um, with four loops and C++. So C++ is really faster, okay. And uh, I found one more example um, about Gibbs sampling on this alphabet. This is from um, this researcher, uh, which I'm, I'm not... Uh, um, I'm, 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 I don't know anything about it, but it, it basically goes through um, the, the mass of the Gibbs, Gibbs um, sampling, and it performs some comparison to see how the parameters change when you make um, uh, some uh, different iterations and then concludes that eff effectively um, there is uh, some rep the, the so if you change the parameters uh, this is effective in the distribution so basically you don't know how the distribution behaves and you like to work on the parameters and to to see how these parameters can uh, affect your distribution you to do some samplings in a way that this parameter can uh, have different values. And so then you see how your distribution changes with these different parameters for different values of the parameters. So you do uh, um, this many times. Um, and um, if you do this in C++ and compare it with R, uh, you do rather faster in C++. So the fun part of the thing is that uh, um, basically Darren Wilson stressed the fact that it's rather, uh, so it, it's uh, sometimes better to have, uh, so the rather pragmatic aspect of how faster and or easy it is to write code rather than just the runtime so it's fluid and you can do it uh, um, and it's also faster so here uh, it's the r code with the two four loops and here is the c plus plus and as you can see, now that we have been through a couple of examples, you know that you need to add the init and that it starts from zero and it's less than add n and you need to increment these things. So you have seen 
three, four examples of this type of loops. Uh, and now it's, it's already a little bit more familiar when you look at it. Then you will remind that you need to add the return, the, the uh, semicolon. So it's exactly the same, but you have a little bit more, like need, need to be a little bit more specific about the type of uh, values that you use. And then we check, if we check the Gibbs as a case study, we see these are the results. This is R. We see that uh, um, Gibbs has a different values, and but the memory and the, and the memory allocation is the same. So this is uh, uh, microsecond, and this is a nanosecond or something like that. So it's rather faster. And even R has a, a little bit, uh, a little, just a bit more of memory allocation. Uh, and even the junk, it's a lot. Uh, so, okay. I think it's uh, four minutes. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions. Otherwise, this is uh, the, the, the second case study. And then um, the, there is how to use um, the package. But I think you can have a look at the chapter because it's, if you need it, it's very straightforward. Uh, and you can build up. So you have a couple of functions that you made with C++. And you can even build up a package uh and then source it to use it within R. I don't I don't hear you. I can't hear you. I think it's muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. S sorry, I had I had the wrong audio source uh chosen. Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I, yeah, so so one question on the on the package part. Um, I, I I looked I looked a little bit in 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 this part of the chapter, and, and I guess you know it gives kind of a nice high level introduction to how you can include C plus uh, plus into a package. But kind of what wasn't clear to me, and maybe this is just a big topic. Um, uh, is is how one would kind of write unit tests and perform unit tests for um, C plus plus code. So I mean, I I understand how to do that for R, but I, I don't know if one how one does that for C for C plus plus, and if the unit testing can kind of be integrated into um, into uh, kind of like the Dev Tools workflow within within. Uh, are so maybe to be a little bit more precise, you know, if I'm developing a package and I have tests, I can I can um, you know I can test I can test my code like Dev Tools test. I can run all of my tests and see the outcome of that for for R code. I'm wondering if for C plus plus, you know, assuming you know, those same things kind of get. Um, Compiled into in, in, into what you would see as a package developer for 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 the outcomes of the unit tests. So I I, I don't know if you happen to have looked into that briefly while reading the chapter, or if anyone has experience with this, if if, if they know. Okay, um, um, I don't have much experience uh, combining the two languages. So, um, I, I have experience with C++ in terms of uh, at education level. I haven't used it professionally. Um, so, 
your question is about how to, to use the um can you just um how to use the the yeah so I, I was kind of thinking like so for any functions that you write you're going to want to write unit tests so if you're developing an r package um and with an r package you you'd have r functions like let's imagine now that you have some functions that are implemented in, in, in C++. I'm wondering kind of how you would do those unit tests, right? Would you do them at the level of C++ or would you do them at the level of like the R wrapper for them? Um, and then I guess separately, sorry, I mean, this is probably a, a, a big question in an area where none of us, none of us have much knowledge. Right. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious. I, I was actually uh, looking at um, this, this one package I, I, I use a lot, Haven, um, which, which uh, allows you to in, like ingest data from other statistical software packages like SAS, SPSS, uh, Stata, um, and it relies on a C-sharp library, actually. So I guess maybe I'll, I'll have a look there. And if I can discern what's going on, I'll report back to the group. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that you 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 can once you choose once you choose the which one of the the two codes uh, are best uh, are best for you. Um, then uh, at that point you you if you you if you have chosen R, you you know how to to well. It's, so to check, to test your function. Uh, if it's in C++, uh, the, the, as I said, you cannot run uh, check. So when, when you, uh, you, you cannot run line by line so to check your code, but you need to test it uh, on a case. So if you want to check your, your code um, and you have written a function, you need to run the function and see if it works to, see, to, 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 to check if it's fine. Once you have chosen uh, the C++ function for your R code, for your R package, or uh, you need to um, have the function uh, ready. And to check a C++ function, you need to, 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 to see if the function works. Uh, and then uh, uh, be careful on the signs and, and all the assignments. I'm, I'm not aware if it, it's a, like uh, a while, I'm not using it, but I'm not aware if there's any, we may, I'm sure that some uh, tools to use uh, to to uh, to that something changes and uh, since I even was two thousand fifteen, but you know uh, maybe something changed. Um, um, you you need to be sh be checking uh, each line and see if you, your syntax is correct. And uh, try with some uh, values and see if the function can, can work. And then you put it inside the, the package, and then you check the package. Uh, uh, in, on overall, I don't think you can check it out on any other R package if it works or not. Um, because then, when it's implemented within R, what do you think? If it's implemented within R, so now it's the function works and you can use it. I'm not sure if I answered the question uh, somehow. No, no, no. It's 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 fine, Frederick. I I think this. Um, I was just kind of curious if anyone happened happened to know. But I think it it sounds like we're all kind of at the same the same level um, of of experience and understanding here. So. Um, uh, yeah, I'll I'll look at it. I was actually just posting in the in the in the chat kind of to see if anyone knew of any packages that use C plus uh, plus. I was saying Haven's one, and and, and Trevin just pointed out that R R Stan is is another one. So I was hoping that maybe I could look at what they've what they've done in the source code and kind of figure out an answer to my own question.
Okay. So um, we, we reached the end of the book club and um, uh, hope to see you again some, some, uh, in some other book clubs. So, uh, not for data science. And so, I look forward to see the, the recording of this session. And uh, uh, okay, so we made it. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, bye. thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 bye.